and welcome to Holding the Space. And today we are here with filmmaker Gavin Hugh. Hello, Gavin. How are you? Hi, Lisa. I'm, I'm doing very well, thank you. And thank you very much for asking me to come and take part. No, no, it's an absolute pleasure um, to spend time with you. Um, I've been watching what you've been doing um, on social media and I'm absolutely full of admiration for the work that you're doing. Well, thank you. Uh, very excited to see what is going to be coming for you in the future. So, mm-hmm. um, so first off, tell us about Gavin. Right, I, I mean, I suppose, um, you know, everyone really doesn't know where to kind of go with this because you can go so many different directions, but um, I'm a Krakori guy. Uh, I was born uh, and raised here. Uh, I went to school at Denham Primary, uh, uh-huh. been to school at Bowie. Uh-huh. Um So, you know, very much kind of local. Um, my career's been fairly interesting, uh, in my opinion, because um, I worked at Sainsbury's at the retail park for a long time. Uh-huh. Then I went to uh, Japan for uh, three years and I taught English abroad for three years. Um, what was that experience like? Oh, it was amazing. Uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, three of the best years of my life, and I still uh, I still miss it. Um, you know, but um, I've got a lot of lifelong friends that I made in Japan, um, and uh, I try to get back. So I've only been back once so far, but I've, I've got plans to obviously go back again. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also worked uh, broadcast TV uh, for STV mm-hmm. uh, in Scotland. Uh, I did some work for Sky News uh, yeah. for a contractor called Siswai for a while. Uh, and then ended up working in the Scottish Parliament, uh, where I've worked uh, as a comms guy for our local MSP, David Torrance. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've also worked for Jenny Goruff over in Glen Office, and um, I still work part-time uh, for Shona Robinson, who uh, is the former Health Secretary. Uh-huh. So I still do some work for her, um, but uh, on the side of all that, um, I set up my own business, Midgebyte Media, in 2017, mm-hmm. which uh, is a video production business based in Kirkcaldy. Where did the name Midgey Media come from? Right. I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> Do you know, actually, um, I, it, it's quite fun because um, I was actually trying to come up with a name because I knew I wanted to set up a, a, a sort of a business and a brand and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was sort of thinking to myself, BuzzFeed was, you know, such a, a great name because mm-hmm. it just kind of sticks in your head. I was thinking, what's a kind of Scottish BuzzFeed? <laughs> I was thinking Buzz, like an insect, right, a midgey, right, okay. And I was actually in the kitchen making spaghetti at the time um, uh, with my girlfriend at the time. The two of us just having a chat and we just sort of bouncing ideas back and forward and I went buzzfeed like a, like a midgy bite and I went oh, midgy <laughs> bite yeah it was like oh that'll do and then after that it was like that'll stick so that was that was the plan so yeah oh brilliant over spaghetti so <laughs> <laughs> so how um, how did your interest in media first start right um, do you know when I was a wee boy um, I was playing video games mm-hmm. uh, Sonic the Hedgehog was my hero um, and <laughs> I spent so much time with Mega Drive so I really wanted to be a video game designer, mm-hmm. developer, all that kind of stuff. I used to doodle on my school uh, workbooks, all these ideas for video games. Um, and then as I got older, um, I started to get into film. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really The War of the Rings, Peter Jackson. Um, that, which, which is so visual. Oh, it blew my mind. And I remember I went to see that. Um, I actually went with my scout group at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we went to see that. And I must have only been about 11 or 12 or something like that. And it just was incredible. And suddenly, all these kind of ideas that I'd had for video games, you know, mm-hmm. when I was a wee boy, I kind of thought, wouldn't it be cool to kind of take some of those and turn them into, into films? Mm-hmm. And then after that, I got really into cinema. Um, I got really, really into, like, Quentin Tarantino, um, Stanley Kubrick, all these, all these big names, you know. And I'm not mm-hmm. in any way comparing myself to these guys, but, you know, they were kind of like inspirations uh-huh. for me. And so from there, um, I thought, you know what, I'd like, to, I'd like to make some films. And, and took it from there, went and did a, a course at, at the University of Stillen, which mm-hmm. was on film studies. Uh, John Honours of English, and um, yeah, it, it kind of combined also with my kind of love of classic literature as well, because um, I, I love um, reading, I love, um, you know, kind of some of the classic novels that are out there. So um, storytelling um, is something I'm really passionate about, and I think what's great about film is that it, um, it's also a very visual medium as well, so it can combine so many different kind of talents together. So it's not just the narrative but it's also, um, you know, the way that the music can, can hit you and the way that the visuals can be so memorable. Um, and I guess that was what kind of drew me to say, I want to go and make some films, mm-hmm. yeah. From what you're saying there, I'm getting the impression it's very much, it's almost like putting a jigsaw together. Yeah. And every piece has a perfect yeah. place. Absolutely. You know, and the thing is, I mean, like, say, for example, when it comes to, to music, for example, I mean, I'm, I, I would describe myself as a bit musically illiterate. Um, I mean, I've got my favourite bands, um, I've got my favourite um, songs, but... You know, um, I couldn't, I'm not a composer. Um, so luckily, you know, we had a fantastic uh, composer on this one, Jessica, mm-hmm. who did some great work. Um, but um, no, I mean, for, um, you know, for my own part, I couldn't uh, possibly, uh, you know, do it all single hand where you have to have a whole team behind you and um, putting everything together and, and working, um, you know, kind of 
not necessarily in harmony because everyone kind of comes with their own ideas, but mm -hmm. it just it does become a very much a collaborative process, and you sort of pick the bits that work and stick it all together, and you end up creating mm -hmm. something that sometimes is even better than what you came up with in your head. So you know, because people are bringing so much to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us about Cold Short right. Film. So Cold uh, is the film we premiered on Friday night at the um, uh, the King's Wife Lounge, mm -hmm. locally, which was great. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a mental health film. Uh, it's about Christmas and the challenges of coping with depression at Christmas time. Uh, Christmas is obviously a you know, fantastic time for a lot of people. We're mm -hmm. going through Christmas. Um, you know, there's tinsel, there's trees, there's turkey, all the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's a double-edged sword. And there's a lot of people who suffer at this time of year. Um, stress can go through the roof. Um, you know, the end of the year can sometimes bring up a lot of regrets for people, uh, make them sort of focus on, on, on sort of um, things they wish they'd done differently, or um, creates this kind of, um, I suppose, a lot of regrets kind of come at the fore. Um, not just that, but I mean, just the fact that so many people around you are having fun and enjoying yourself and having a great kind of um, time, mm -hmm. and you feel this immense pressure to join in. And then if you're already kind of potentially going through a challenge, a mental health challenge, to then suddenly have it be exacerbated or amplified by... Because it could heighten your anxiety. Well, of course, yeah. absolutely. And then, of course, you're in this situation where everyone around you is, you know, celebrating. You mm -hmm. feel this immense pressure to take part. But if you're already suffering, you know, that, that, just, that just piles on the pressure. And it, it's a very, very tough time of year. So cold is mostly about exploring that. Um, we tried really hard, or I, when I wrote the script, I tried really hard to uh, make it a fairly universal in terms of being a sort of a thing that people could experience with. But I also want to be quite honest. Um, so I think a lot of people, when you watch a Christmas film, um, it's very much, you know, sort of like, you know, Love Actually. I watched Love Actually the other night. And it's a great wee film. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously it's very twee and it's very life-affirming and it's all the rest of it. You, but have, to, you have to be the little, like, red. Aye. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, it's, it's very much a kind of, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's very saccharine, very sweet and mm -hmm. very sugary. But if you actually want a sort of very real kind of you know portrayal of, of what it's actually like at Christmas time to suffer from those issues you're not going to find that in Hollywood so I thought you know what let's try and make a film that's at Christmas time that tries to be just a little bit more authentic about these issues you know mm -hmm. and I, I very much get the feeling from what you're saying it was very much a collaborative absolutely peer supported yeah. effort 100% yeah I mean so the original idea for Code came about uh, maybe 10-12 years ago I was still at uni at the time mm -hmm. and I had a vague idea of, of, of a film that I wanted to make but I never finished the script it sort of sat in a drawer for a long time and then the last few years I kind of thought well maybe I'll, I'll dig it back out and so I messaged a few people um, and said shall we make this and every year Christmas came around and everyone was too busy so this year um, I spoke to folk maybe around about the, the summer no, last summer, sorry, 2018. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we should do this. Let's make a film. Let's do it. And the enthusiasm from the team was so good and, and so supportive. Um, I'd worked with a lot of people before in various projects. Um, so reaching out to them and said, here's the idea. We're going to try and tell something that's a bit more authentic and, and it's very kind of, you know, um, hopefully connects with people. Mm -hmm. um, people came forward with their own ideas and their own kind of, um, I suppose, their own experiences as well. And I thought what was quite interesting about this is, uh, not to speak on anyone's behalf, but a lot of members of the team um, have had their own struggles with mental health issues themselves, mm -hmm. um, which I think allowed them to, you know, really kind of bring that to the fore um, in terms of the performances and, and all the other aspects, etc. It, it was quite personal. So they were able to be creative from a very authentic point of view. I think so, yeah. And the thing is, as I say, you know, I, I sometimes think that art can be quite a therapeutic process because it allows you to kind of work through um, a lot of maybe deep-seated issues or, or mm -hmm. things. And if you're performing a character, I mean, obviously in this in this film I don't act in it, but if you're performing as a character, maybe that allows you to kind of like take some of those issues and kind of explore them um, in a very kind of emotional kind of way. I mean... Um, and quite a safe way as well. Yeah, I mean, for example, I mean, like, you know, Rowan, who's our, who's our weed, I mean, um, you know, that's quite an emotionally challenging role for her to do. And also Craig, her father in the film, um, that, that's, a, that's a really tough thing to do. But, you know... Um, they, they're able to kind of bring um, so much to themselves and, and so much, um, I suppose, kind of uh, character. It feels almost like you're kind of watching them be, be authentic. They're not acting. They're just, they're just kind of exploring these kind of themes and issues themselves. Um, and that, that's quite powerful and moving. It, it's, not, it's not so much as a, performal as a performance as much as it is maybe just kind of like um, living through someone else's kind of experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
but no having those emotions already. Aye, aye. Yeah. And I say I don't speak on his behalf. I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't comment on on, on Craig or, or Rowan in particular or anyone else's, um, you know, sort of experiences, mental health journeys, etc. But the ability for those people to, um, you know, kind of like explore these these themes and issues in such a personal way, it's, it's, it must be quite a tough thing to to do as a performer, yeah, definitely. And very courageous. I think so, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, but, I mean, they're, they're so talented. I mean, uh, don't in any way, you know, take away the idea that, you know, all members of the cast here had, you know, have experienced mental health issues, because certainly that's not the case, but some of them do. And, um, you know, in, in the situation whereby they are able to kind of, like, draw upon that, um, that is a very personal and brave thing to do. And, and, I, and, I, and I would applaud them for being able to bring so much of themselves to the, to the roles. And you supported the local community because the night of the screening, it was our fundraiser for Sam H. Hi, it was. Yeah. No, it was great. Um, you know, uh, we uh, that was actually quite uh, an important thing for me. I really wanted it to be kind of a, a, a in some way kind of you know doing some good because you can talk the talk, but then you could charge five pound entry, make a lot of money, put it in your back pocket, and that'd be fine. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's kind of it's kind of missing the point a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. so so I, I reached out to um, Sam's Cafe. Um, who are obviously at the Winter Lane Centre. Yeah. Um, and it was Ross and Chelsea from there came along. And um, no, it was great to have them there on the night. And I was really happy to, you know, hopefully have helped raise them a bit of money as well. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, doing a wee bit of good for the cause. So, aye. All right. How do you feel when you are behind the lens? Hmm. <sighs> Nervous. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, no, I, you know, I don't know. It's, do you know what the problem is, right? You, when you are, when you have an idea in your head, um, translating that into a, a film it can be quite a, a big process and there's so much involved you, know, you spend ages planning and thinking it through a lot of energy oh I you know you spend you spend days if not weeks you know planning these things you know and you've got to work at logistics so you know obviously kind of like find the location find you know the cast find the crew you know um, deciding the time of day make sure everyone's schedules wind up all the rest of it and it's really tricky because then actually when you're there it's almost kind of like a sense of oh I didn't think this was going to happen, you know, because so many things have to be coordinated to make it kind of happen. Mm -hmm. So then there is a pressure to make it make it happen right, because you don't want to have to do reshoots or have to bring everyone back together again. Mm -hmm. So it can be quite a, a pressurised environment. Um, but I think it's also very rewarding. So, yeah, there's a sense of pressure, but there's also a sense of kind of like when, when, you, when you do a take and it's just it's better than you thought it was going to be in your head and it just you can be moved and touched by it. Um, you know, it just makes it all worthwhile, and you think that, that's why I do this. So, if I was to sum it up, I would say it's a nervous experience, um, but it's also a really gratifying and rewarding one. Tell us about because you were involved this year with uh, BBC The Social. Uh -huh, yeah. That looked mm -hmm. like a very interesting experience. Well, I've, I've only done a few videos for The Social, I've done mm -hmm. it since uh, sort of middle of last year. Mm -hmm. I've done a few things, um, and uh, you know, um, I've got plans to do many many more videos of them there's a few things that were sort of um you know discussed this year but never quite panned out unfortunately um but uh the biggest one i did was um, a friend of mine who uh ross uh ross cunningham who is one of my best friends mm -hmm. and uh he uh spoke about his mental health issues mm -hmm. um and how it kind of got him into monroe bagging and that was that was a really good project to do it got over two million hits on uh you know facebook twitter Congratulations. Et thanks that no, was great <laughs> so really, really good um you know response uh, it was fantastic to see people kind of responded to it in such a positive and way engaging with that. absolutely yeah so it just kind of shows you the power of social media and i think it's good that the bbc is kind of offering that that platform mm -hmm. people um because you know particularly in scotland there's there's often uh, so much talent that just doesn't get a chance to be showcased or absolutely. or platformed so good on the bbc for for actually kind of giving people mm -hmm. a an opportunity it's good you know now i was curious about do you have a creative process when it comes to um uh -huh. your working projects do you have a note a secret notebook yeah i mean I do you know yeah um i think a lot of it is um how do i describe this like you know i often just daydreaming and mm -hmm. and you know because i you know I'll, I'll be daydreaming and, and sometimes i could be daydreaming on the train daydreaming in the car daydreaming when I'm having a conversation I don't particularly <laughs> enjoy, you know. <laughs> I'm thinking, so someone's talking at you and you're sort of thinking, hmm, how about this idea? Have so, you know, that can happen. Um, but no, I, I spend so much of my time, it might sound a bit introverted, but I spend so much of my time in my own head just kind of like dreaming about things and coming up with ideas. And then I, I like to carry a notebook with me. I usually have a notebook with mm -hmm. me. And then if I've got an idea that I think sticks, then I'll just jot it down quickly because things can be forgotten so quickly as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But no, I'm always daydreaming, 100%. I think I think that's part of the beauty of being a creative, though. Mm -hmm. You know, it is almost like you're going into that movie in your head, Aye. whether whatever that may be. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now I was, I'm wondering, if you could remake 
any film, right. what would it be? This, this is a really controversial choice. But I, you know, I'd love to make Casablanca again. 